Hello. So now we're going to try this example here. The question is, suppose that 1, 3, and 5, comma, P are the endpoints of a line segment which has length 4 square root of 2. And the question is, what is P? Um, now, there are a couple of ways of approaching this problem. First, we're going to use the distance formula. And then uh, that's going to be our technique number one. And our technique number two uh, will be a technique that will be helpful if you recall certain facts. And those facts I'm going to provide to you when we do technique two. And the reason why I'm going to show you technique two is uh, number one as a reminder if you know these facts already from the past but maybe have not seen them used in this way. And number two in case you have never seen this in before so that you can see it. Uh, used so that you can like appreciate it maybe notate it in, an, in a flash card uh, with the fact on the front and this example on the back uh, the way I solve it um, and anyway let's begin so technique one technique one okay we're going to use the distance formula okay why because you tell us that one three five here are the endpoints of a line segment which has the length four square root of two, so therefore, we're you know we have two points of a segment. Uh, we have two endpoints of a segment. We have the length. Of course, the distance formula makes sense. And here we go. We recall that the distance formula says that the distance of the segment whose endpoints are x one y one and x two y two is d, where d is x, uh, the square root of x two minus x one squared plus y two minus one squared. So now here, we're going to copy our points here. 1 comma 3 and 5 comma p. Now we can label these as uh, x2, I mean x1, y1 and x2, y2. Okay? And so therefore we can say, aha, we know our distance is 4 square root of 2, so we can say that 4 square root of 2 4 square root of 2 is our distance. So 4 square root of 2 our distance will be equal to the square root of, um, and since I've already written there without plugging it in, I'm not going to write it here without plugging it in, but I want you to always write it down without plugging it in first and then a plug in later. Okay? So actually, let me do that here. You know, I always want you to write it before you plug in first and then to plug in because that's going to help you guys like ingrain this formula in your brain forever okay so then we know that our d in our case is 4 square root of 2 because they tell us that so 4 square root of 2 is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 so 5 minus 1 squared plus my y2 minus my y1 okay y2 is p we don't know what p is but we're going to find out. Minus y1, which is the 3. Okay? Squared. Okay? Now. Um, okay. Let me see here. Okay. So now here, I know that 5 minus 1 squared is 4 squared, which is going to be 16. Okay? So this is going to give us uh, the square root of 16 plus. And then here I have p minus 3 in parentheses squared and that equals to 4 square root of 2. Now from here there are a lot of different ways I could proceed but the simplest way is going to be squaring both sides so I can get rid of the square root first and foremost. So now I'm going to briefly square the 4 square root of 2 here on the side to remind us of how to do it. 4 square root of 2 squared. What does that mean? That means we're going to multiply 4 square root of 2 times 4 square root of 2. Now here it kind of looks ugly, but it looks, but it will be a lot easier looking if we utilize the commutative property to replace 4 times the square root of 2 with the square root of 2 times 4. Okay. Okay, and then here I can use the associative property 
to do the multiplication of the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 first, and then to multiply with the other two numbers. Now, I want to go backwards a little bit here, and I'm going to walk you through this completely. I want to ask you to think, what is the square root of 4, just for a moment. A lot of you will say, oh, David, the square root of 4 is 2. And I would then ask you, why is it 2? And you would tell me, well, because, David, 2 times 2 is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4. Or in other words, 2 squared is 4, right? The square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. So if I have the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, I'm going to get 2, okay? So I can continue this. By the way, I know that I'm doing like super, I know that this calculation is super like I'm doing too many steps here, but I just want to show you guys absolutely explicitly like the thought process of how you do this, right? Why was the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? 2? Because square root of 2 is the you is the number such that when you square it you get 2 back just as 3 is the square root of 9 because when you square it you get 9 back then I can multiply it 4 times 2 is 8 8 times 4 is 32 okay so when I square both sides of this equation on the left hand side I have 32 and on the right hand side I'm just going to get rid of the square root right so let me get rid of this calculation now In fact, before, in fact, let me just take this up, well, let me write this next line first, and then I want to make an observation for you guys that, 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 that I want you guys to see. I know you guys have probably thought of it before, but uh, even if you haven't thought about it, it's a nice little nugget for you guys to take away from this. Okay? So, here I have squared both sides, okay? This is the consequence of squaring both sides. So you might so right now so right now I can continue this calculation okay but I want to take a brief uh, I want to take this brief moment to do an aside for you which is which I think is is not important but it's gonna be helpful in some of these problems sometimes and I want therefore I want to share it with you now okay so right now we had just done the calculation four square root of two squared right okay I'm gonna show you something that's related that could have helped us out here. When I saw the expression 4 square root of 2, if, so, when we're doing square roots, anything that, anything that's paired on the inside comes out, uh, one copy comes out, right? When we were doing the square root of 20, we saw that the square root of 20 was equal to the square root of 2 times 2 times 5. And so, since there was a pair of 2's on the inside, I can pull them out and it became 2 square root of 5, right? So in the same way, if I have a number on the outside, I can put it on the inside as two copies of itself. Let me explain. So 4 square root of 2, I can rewrite it as the square root of 4 times 4 times 2. Okay? And then 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. So this is the square root of 32. Okay? And so then if, if we were to ask... To square this, well, the square root of 32 squared will be 32 because the square will take away the square root. So, in other words, what I want you to see here is just as uh, when we were taking the square roots, right? Let me write that down explicitly here. When I did the square root of 20, we saw that if we made the factor tree, I'm just going to remind you here, 20 was 4 times 5. And we know that 4 is 2 times 2. So we can write 20 as 2 times 2 times 5 on the inside, right? And then we know that <coughs> because there's a pair of 2's here, I can pull 1, 2 out, and I get 2 square root of 5, right? In the same way as that was possible, if we have a number on the outside of the square root, we can put it in by putting 2 copies on the inside and multiplying. And so this is another way we could have easily seen that 4 square root of 2, when we squared it, gave us 32. Okay, so I know this is kind of separate from our discussion, but I wanted to show you this other way of looking at it. Okay, so now we're going to continue this problem. We're going to finish that. Okay.
Okay. So now here, if you notice, this is a quadratic. And it's already got this term, this square term by itself. So it's going to be very easy for us to, to, to solve it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 16. I'm going to subtract 16. And I can see that 32 minus 16 is 16. And then it's going to equal to this p minus 3 squared. OK. How do I get the p, mi the p minus 3 by itself? I'm going to square root both sides. So I'm going to get plus minus the square root of 16 equals to p minus 3. And of course, I know that I can rewrite that here as, well, that's going to mean that p minus 3 is going to equal plus minus 4. Why 4? Because the square root of 16 is 4. So therefore, either p minus 3 is equal to 4, okay, or p minus 3 is equal to negative 4, okay? Here, plus 3, plus 3, I see that p is equal to 7. And here, plus 3, plus 3, I can see that p is equal to uh, negative 1, okay? Now, let me make a brief comment here. You might say, okay, David, here, when I took the square root, I automatically affixed a plus minus to the square root of the 16. Why did I do that? Okay, so I know that p minus 3 is a number, which, when I square it, gives me 16. Now, if I take a positive times a positive, I get a positive. If I take a negative times a negative, I get a positive. Therefore, let's say p minus 3 squared equals 16, then either p minus 3 is a positive number whose square is 16, or p minus 3 is a negative number whose square is 16, okay? And if you think back on one of our previous examples, when we were doing the triangle problem, when I square rooted, I just chose the positive number, right? I said d, I, I said that the d, the, I said that the d was the square root of 20, and I didn't put a plus minus. Why was that? Because I made the conscious choice to only pick the positive one because that one represented a length. But in general, when we're taking the square root of a number, such as in the solution of this quadratic, right from this step to this step, I always affix a plus minus because both the positive and negative result may have meaning. Now, um, and that leads later on, that's going to lead to the difference between, uh, uh, well, that's going to lead to in different kinds of settings, it's going to lead to the idea of algebraically correct solutions that have no meaning, okay? But we're not going to worry about that right now, but I just wanted to make that highlight that whenever you're square rooting like this, you know, you take the plus minus. So if I take these two p's, these two p's will lead to the length of the segment being 4 square root of 2, okay? Okay. So let me make another point here. I asked in the question, what is the value of p? And what we have found is that there are in fact two such p's that satisfy. So now I'm going to discuss this at a little bit of length. And, uh, and uh, so bear with me. Uh, so, um, so in order to visualize that more carefully, I'm going to draw a picture of that, OK? OK, let's do that. So here, I've, here, so basically here I've replaced my 5 comma p with the two potential, uh, with the two points that are that we that we got from using the distance formula, to force the five comma p point to give a distance of a length of a segment with uh, with length um, with length four square root two, and of course we have this point here. Let's call this point A for convenience, and let's call this point B. And let's call this point B prime, okay? Just to indicate that there are two candidates for B. Um, or not that they're candidates, they are. And we're going to look at that. We're, so basically, we've already solved the problem. We could have answered P equals 7 or P equals negative 1 to the original problem. So basically, what I'm doing from now is just extra, just, you know, because I want to show it to you. Because, um, you know, this, this is what I want you guys to see. Uh, these are extra thoughts I want you guys to think about. Um, Anyway, but yes, so stick with me here. So first of all, I'm going to plot my point 1, 3. And again, I want you to notice how I just drew the portion of the graph paper, the Cartesian plane, 
that's gonna fit these points nicely. And I didn't draw like anything else. Okay, one, three. X equals one, three, so that's gonna be here. So let's call that A. Okay, five, seven. So if five, seven, up here, and then five, negative one, be down here. So five seven, that's our B right there. This is our B prime. Okay. So now, and by the way, once I draw, once I've drawn this figure and I've highlighted to you what's happening here, a lot of you will probably notice what my technique two is going to be. Okay. And at the very least, even if you don't, we're going to discuss that slightly right now. So our claim, so basically here, what you can see is that the distance horizontally from A to this vertical line that connects the B and the B prime, oh shit, is four, because I need to go one, two, three, four spaces to get to that line. Now, to go from this height of three to this B, I have to go up one, two, three, four, okay? Similarly, I have to go down one, two, three, and four to get to these points. So what we have just shown actually is that, oh my God, let me make this point for you guys very clear. What I just showed you is that obviously this length is the same for this triangle. Let's say A, this point, B, and A, this point, B prime. This horizontal length is the same. This, uh, this vertical length is the same as that vertical length. And we know because we calculated it originally that this length, four square root of two, is the same as this length, which is four square root of two, because we forced the p values to make that true. So that means that by side, 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 these two triangles are congruent. In other words, if I were to take this triangle here and I were to fold it over onto this triangle, all the sides would match. And the point B would land on the point B prime. The A would stay on A. And this point, whatever it is, let's call it C. Um, would end on C, right? Moreover, we know that, um, uh, moreover, we know that since this length is the same as that length, if we wanted to, if we drew a circle with the radius four square root of two, it would go through these two points with center at A, okay? But now I wanna show you something important. We saw that this length from A to C, that's four. This length from C to B is four, right? And we also saw that this length from a to C is four, and that this length from C to B is four. And moreover, let me state an important fact from geometry. So it is the following fact here. A point, this is from geometry, a point equidistant from the endpoints of a segment lies on the perpendicular bisector of that segment, okay? So a point equidistant, that means the same distance. What I'm about to claim to you guys is that this point A, uh, and this, I mean, this, this line from A to C is perpendicular to this line B, B prime, okay? How do I know that? Number one, we know that B, C is four, we know that C, B is four, so we know that that point is on the bisector. Uh, we know that that point C is, the bis is, a, is a bisector of this segment, and we know that A is equidistant from the endpoints of this segment. So therefore, this one must be on the uh, must be on a bisector. But which bisector? The perpendicular bisector. Therefore, if I drop the line from A to C, that must be the perpendicular bisector. Therefore, this angle is 90 degrees. And therefore, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem, right? Let me make a schematic of this triangle for us here, okay? Where this is four, this is four, and here this is a, a, a side we don't know the length of. In other words, here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to claim via the Pythagorean theorem that what we got that these triangles have, that this side of the triangle is actually four square root of two, but I wanna, of course we already know that because we solved for it based on the distance formula and the distance formula was derived from the Pythagorean theorem. We know it's gonna work, but I just wanna show you here from this geometric diagram. So here we know that, the, that D is the hypotenuse and we know that therefore D squared is gonna be four squared plus four squared which is gonna be d squared equals 
16 plus 16 is 32, it's going to be 32. So therefore, d is going to be the square root of 32. And we know that if we take the square root of 32, we know that we can write 32 as, yeah, so let's take this opportunity. 32 is the same as a times 4, which is the same as uh, 2 times 4, which is 2 times 2, which is 2 times 2 here as well. So I have a total of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So the, the square root of 32, so d will be the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Um, let me see if you guys are going to be able to see that. Oh yeah, you guys will be able to see it. So I have a pair of 2's here. I have another pair of 2's here. So I'm going to get d is going to be 2 times 2 times the square root of 2 because that pair of 2's became this first 2 on the outside. This pair of 2's became that 2 on the outside. And that 2 remaining stays on the inside. So therefore, d indeed is 4 square root of 2. And what I want you to see, guys, is that this triangle is the same as this triangle, because this triangle has 4 here, 4 here, and it's a right angle. So it's exactly like this drawing. It's just that it's been flipped like this. And then this one has been flipped like this, right? And we already argued that this one was congruent to this one based on the side, side, side criteria, okay? Or we could have also, we could have argued that from different angles. We showed that this point was on the perpendicular bisector of this segment. We know that C is in the bisector. Therefore, AC is the perpendicular bisector. Therefore, we know that that angle is 90. We know that this side, this angle, and this side match this side, this angle, and this side from this triangle. So we could have also proved the congruence of these triangles by the side angle side criteria. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. This was all extra stuff that I wanted to show you with the relationship with the with the figure and to justify that there were, in fact, two solutions, that both P's would be uh, valid, some additional reasoning, how you could have looked at the problem, and things like this. And now we're going to move on to technique two. By the way, I hope you guys are enjoying this discussion, and, um, and, uh, and uh, well, let me continue with technique two. So now we're going to do this, uh, do technique two with this problem. And what I noticed, so like, for example, this is like kind of like a problem you might see on a test situation. I see, I saw that one, three, and five, four are the endpoints of a line segment which has length four square root of two. So when I look at a problem like this, and I look at the square root of two, it reminds me of something special. Something that I hope all of you already know about, and if you don't, which I'm gonna show you right now. And it is the special, it is the special triangle that corresponds to the 45, 45, 90 situation. Okay? Okay. So here, the way it's going to work out is that, is that I'm looking at, okay. So what I noticed was, I was thinking in my brain, okay, I'm going to, I noticed the x, the four square root of two, and I imagine maybe it's the side of a, of a, of, of a special triangle, right? So I look over here, I see, okay, this is 1, 3, okay? And I know that my other point is 5P. So what I imagined in my brain was, I take this horizontal line, and I go to like, uh, 2, 5, 3. Instead of 5P, I think to myself, okay, I'm gonna go to 5, 3, okay? And then I know, I know that, okay, I know this length 4 because 5 minus 1 is 4 and I know 3 minus 3 is 0 and so I know that it's going to have length 4. Okay, and in, in other words, let me make, let me state that more clearly. If a point if two points only differ in their x or in their y but they don't differ in the other coordinate, then the length is just the difference between uh, between the coordinates that do differ. Here they don't differ in the y coordinate, so the distance between these points is just 5 minus 1. You'll see that that's true in general. Um, or if it had been 3, 1, and let's say it had been 3, 3, then the distance would have been 2. Of course, that would have been a vertical line, but you know, that way you get my point. Okay, so anyway, so here. So I know if I'm looking at this situation that um, the length of this segment is 4. So because I knew my special triangle by heart, well I knew, aha, if I go 4 up this way, then this, then this one will be 4 square root of 2. 
But what would be going up for? I would add 4 to the y. So I know it would have been 5, 7. Similarly, I knew that, aha, by the same reasoning, if I went down straight 4, then that would be length uh, 4 square root of 2. And so what would that be? Well, I would do 3 minus 4 to get the y coordinate there, and it would be 5 comma negative 1. And those are indeed the two values of p that um, that corresponded to our problem uh, that, that corresponded to our problem's uh, original solution. Um, of course, this only worked because these points were uh, specially located. In general, um, you know, to use the distance formula is the unless it, unless it's a special situation like this. Um, to use the distance formula is uh, more straightforward, more general, and um, maybe not easier to do, but definitely worth knowing how to do. Okay, And this special triangle, along with its companion, the 30-60-90 triangle, are very good triangles to know by heart for when situations like this arise, when you can actually use them. Thank you.